today we're working on a walk-in cooler and I got a trainee with me so he's gonna be doing the work and we're just gonna question him and let him do whatever needs to be done so the problem was the unit is iced up so let's go in here and take a look at this we've got us a KE2 temp controller with air defrost and I have not worked with a bunch of these so I'm gonna, we'll have to go through and double check the programming. Now as you can see we've got a little bit of a problem here. It's a little bit iced up. So we've got to melt that and it's air defrost so only easy way to do this is with a hose. So a little adapter here comes in pretty handy. Fits in the regular sink. Yeah, that bad boy's a little thick. Yeah, it's a mess. Torch is just it's not as fast as water. Water has more surface contact with it, so it melts it a lot faster. So yeah, we got that there, and then we're gonna have to melt some of that out of there. So just use that same spray pattern. Let's get those legs out of there. Kind of nice of them to have that in here for us. The pan's probably gonna catch most of it, really. Yeah, no, there's sometimes, like, when it's, say it's an older cooler and they got a lot of gunk in it, sometimes I'll just cut the drain line and let the drain line go right into a bucket because you'll end up plugging up in the, the drain line later or it won't be able to keep up the other issue I bring it into. Yeah, eventually that pan will fill up and it's gonna start going over the sides in here and stuff. Probably. Like what it's doing right here already? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, let's make a short work of it by far. Looks like it's clean to me. Yep. I guess I did get it all. Yep. So he said that they didn't use it a whole lot last year and it's only a year old, so possibly it's not programmed right. Um, one of the employees left the door open all night, froze it up, and then they thawed it out and it never worked quite right after that. And I think this was a side job, Bob. Uh, install. It's definitely not something, not one of ours. I'm gonna check, but it don't look like they mounted the bulb for the TXV outside of the out of the box, so it kind of... That's another part of the problem? I don't know if it has anything to do with this part, but it definitely could cause it to not feed the refrigerant correctly. But, you know, either way, I mean, every little bit helps. At least it's got a solenoid in here. And while we're working on that, they wanted us to check out the freezer here which I already fixed this door seal, but what was happening was this door seal was sticking and rolling the magnet and then causing a gap, which then had a bunch of frost. So ended up yanking the door seal off, threw it in the sink over here, got it nice and warm, and was able to roll the magnet back to flat position. And then put a little silicone once I dried everything off, a little silicone here in the edge corner so that basically it'll hold it there and it won't roll in place. So the bulb looks like it's probably okay over there? Yeah, it's probably in, I would say like the 9, nine to 10 o'clock position. Okay. And it is strapped on. I mean, I would say probably half the bulb is in the box, maybe a little bit more, but then the rest of it's outside of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's about what they wanted. I believe that says 30 degrees. So that would be about six o'clock or nine o'clock, so that's about right. Smaller lines, you can get away with it. You just don't want it on the bottom of the line because where the oil sets at, and it can insulate it and cause a false reading. Ow. Ready? Yep. Looks like pretty good contact. It's on the side. And I can't tell what refrigerant it is. Number's got a little bit uh, Faded from some whatever reason. Make sure all these are tight. Nothing's rubbed through type area. So, oh, what's there we go? Oh, our 404. Good deal. Hey, Rich. Yeah. All right, 
Okay. It says 404 on the inside. Okay, I'm super confused because it says factory holding charge. Yeah. It says helium slash dry air. Yeah. And then it says designated refrigerant. It's 404 or R448. Yep. What they do, helium is very easy to detect leaks because the molecules are super small. So they'll use a helium detector to leak check these a lot of times. So they'll put helium in it, and then you just want some sort of pressure in there of a dry gas, which helium is, and that will displace any possibility of getting uh, moisture in there from condensation, setting in the warehouse, whatever. So they must have just left it in there. Not the prettiest install in the world, but I guess it works. Somebody did it on the side, I think. We're going to go ahead and kick it on and see how our program is. I'll just go ahead and flip on that power switch here on the side, back side. It's like a rotating swing one. There we go. Might start off in defrost. Let's check our programming on this thing and see what we got. So I'm kind of new to this one too. So temperature set point. Might be able to just go up and down and see how it reads. They may have a lock on it. Say press and hold or something. Okay. Temperature set point, probably the center button tell you what it is. Unit type. I want to see that. Looks 35. like there's yep, 35 degrees. That seems fine. For beer and stuff, I mean it's gonna be fine. Unit, whatever the hell that is. Units for temp display? Oh, Fahrenheit or Celsius. What's F F A F A H A D R mod bus address? Yeah, that's if you want to put it on a, a control system. Okay, no, we don't want to do that. Nope. That T A V temp alarm delay? Yeah, 90 minutes. So basically, if it hits temperature, it's going to wait 90 minutes before it goes off. That way, it gives a time in between defrost and somebody leaving the door open. Sounds about right. High alarm offset. Five. Yeah, so if it goes up to 40 or whatever, that seems a little high, but whatever. DEG. DFT, probably defrost. Uh, yeah, DFT, defrost. Defrost time. 20. That's pretty short. I, let's take that up to... We go as high as 60 minutes. Um, we could try... Let's just do 60. That's the industry standard with us. And if we do less of them, we'll be all right. Everybody's going to be a little different depending on where they live at, community levels and stuff. Yeah, could have changed it there. Yeah. Instead of going all the way up. It's all good. Now I'll go back into it and see if it's stuck. See, it didn't stick, so you got to so. enter it. So there you go. Learn from your mistakes. Now hit enter and hold it until it quits blinking, I bet you. Now, go back into it. So now it's at 60. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's kind of blinking at zero. Make sure that I don't mean nothing. Now. Yeah, it fell. Oh, All right, good deal. DPD would be deep frost per day, so we want to see this times four. We could probably get away with two being uh, longer now. Yeah. And that way it's less likely. But, we, you know, we could even do three, but let's just do, let's, let's just do two. We've gotten away with that forever. And yeah, remember, they're not a full-time restaurant, so it's not like they're working during the day. So just to press and hold to see if it holds. Yeah, it did. Okay, good. What's the next thing? CSH would be max, max compressor starts slash hours. Yeah, it's kind of like a cycle rate, so yeah, six probably right. That's about ten differential. Two, it's pretty tight, but I mean... Standard's usually three degrees on a regular generic thermostat, like an analog. But I mean, it can hold tighter. Let's go ahead and take it up to three. That way, it can go all the way up to 38, and that way, it gives a little bit of natural air defrosting. And we're back to T5 temperature set point. Okay. T5. Yeah, I think I'd be fine. So let's go ahead and check our sight glass and we can check our super. He wants the box to get sound to temperature and we'll see where everything's at because it may not have gotten pop properly started. I want to shut the door. Yeah, that probably helped. Yep. Yeah. 
Bring your 5 16ths with you. Yeah, because that one's got like a turn, so you can put a screwdriver in there. Okay. And uh, we'll check, see if it's got how they end up terminating things, make sure everything looks good on it. What we got out here, what's that clock or uh, thermostat thing we got? Six. Oh man, I got silicone on my pants. <laughs> that ain't coming out. Lovely, and it's right in the crotch. Wonderful. And it's, <laughs> and it's gray. You gotta love that. What the hell is that? Is that for the fan or what is that? Let's let's figure that out on the uh, schematic there. See a thermostat down there? No, I see ambient uh, therm alternate ambient thermostat. Right ambient thermostat reduces EC motor speed at colder ambience and activates crankcase receiver heater during compressor off cycle, only during cold weather. So basically anything below 60 degrees, they're adjusting it. So it's a two speed uh, fan, uh, whether it's electronic controlled or if it's just a regular, you know, multi-tap, that's what they're doing it at. 60, you know, may not need to be that high. We probably could go long, lower. Say you probably go down a Looks like it was started up in February of 20, so it's fairly newer. 5.5 pounds of 404, which is cool that they wrote that. May want to use a better marker, so it's for later. But yeah, I, you know, it'll be all right. The 60 degrees. I mean, you definitely start falling off around, you know, 70s. But coolers are made to run a lot colder. You got a little timer here, so it doesn't uh, short cycle. Because uh, when this thing pumps down and shuts off, it uh, sometimes can rise up and then it'll short cycle it. Um, which they got it set really low, 0.3, so basically nothing at all. Up to as much as 5. Yeah, you don't want to go too high um, because then it just lets the refrigerant come back and migrate to the compressor, which ain't good. Um, They've got it grounded. They use solid core wire. He actually bent it around the terminal, which is nice. You don't see that too well. No, I, I, I like that if you're gonna do it that way. We can double check their work, double check their... Make sure everything's good in there. Which is... Let's get the refrigerant charge set first. We'll double check that when we get done. Um, pop that rear cover off. You got to get into it there to take that little cap cover off of the uh, over here. Sight glasses right there. It's underneath that white and green thing. And then I always like to check my caps and stuff, and make sure they tighten them all back up again. It looks solid. Don't see no bubbles. It's never a bad thing. Make sure that all the caps are tight and stuff. That one inside there, that one always gets forgotten. Usually that one, uh, if you can untighten it with, with your hand, you know that it ain't tight. Those are kind of nice valves they got there so you can actually pull it down and vacuum. It's a little bit nicer than uh, the bone unit, honestly. Now see the um, low pressure switch. It is on that uh, tube right here. This goes back. I use that instead of the. There it is. Well, that's convenient. So let's, let's see where that comes on at because it's set too too high or too low. It can cause it to go into a negative. So if you ever get a leak, you want to make sure the thing shuts off before it gets into a negative and sucks air in and destroys the compressor. So we can check that real quick. Go ahead and pop the top on it. Probably the easiest way to get into it. And then we'll put gauges on the suction side and see where our suction pressure is when we shut off. And we can kind of see where our superheat is when we get done. See, sometimes it doesn't pay to have a long one. Yeah, I know. This, I had it on, on here for whatever reason. I use a regular one with an extension. That way I can always, double, always separate it. Plus it's cheaper when you buy it until you start losing the extension. But that's the reason why I run an extension on mine. Ta-da! McMillan. What's 
fastest yeah. control right there. It's a headmaster. Good deal. So, how's it work? Yeah, I know what it is, but I'm not exactly 100% sure how it works. I know it's it's a bypass for your, it'd be for your high side, but for what, for when and why? Well, so they're already slowing down the fan for low ambient, which you can fan cycle on and off, which causes surges up and down, up and down. This is gonna be a little more steady. So what you've got going on here is you've got the hot gas coming from the compressor, comes up, comes down to here, into the valve. And right now you can feel it's not hot, but if you grab here, you, you don't really wanna keep holding on to it. You can tell it's not feeding, which you, you don't want it to feed. Once it's uh, uh, at the set point pressure, basically there's a spring inside here. And so the liquid comes out of the condenser because it's cooled and then it comes out of the bottom, comes up and then goes on through. If the pressure drops down, so does the spring and a little cap in there, and that allows a modulated flow of hot gas to come out with liquid too, and then that goes to your receiver and on out to your uh, metering device. And basically what that does, it tries to keep the head pressure up so that you can have a certain differential for your TXV to work properly. If you don't have the differential, the TXV won't operate correctly and it causes issues. So what ends up happening with this type of system, your receiver here is your liquid uh, tank to hold your extra excess refrigerant. So what you actually do is you charge up to a full sight glass and then you add, you know, for your winter charge, which usually is 10-15%, as it gets colder, it's going to stack that refrigerant in the bottom of the coil here and then when it modulates it can use it through there. So. It's just extra capacity. If you turned off the fan, it would build up heat, so it would blocking it off, and you're reducing the size of your condenser. So that's basically what they're doing. It's, it's more smooth that way. So they're doing a combination of both, which is even better yet. So it's a pretty decent little unit. Um, let's go ahead and get suction gauges on there and check it and see where the uh, shut off, uh, off and on uh, pressures are. Cause you gotta be careful it's not too high for the extreme cold weather, and you gotta make sure it's not too low for when it shuts off. And I have your permission to use this on the video, right? Yeah. All right, just wanna make sure. Oh, look at that. We have a friend sleeping. See that? Look down here at the bottom of the fan. Oh, shit. Alfred the mouse, man. He got smacked in the head. Hey, you ain't supposed to be taking a nap there, pal. I'm telling you, they don't even pay rent. Huh? You have a, a mouse in there, it's dead. Or what are we running there for our satur uh, saturation temperature? And usually the most accurate is horizontal. That was something even my old butt didn't realize, so. It's horizontal. Not yeah, they, that's how they actually wanted that. I've always did either or, right? but it, you can do vertical, but they prefer to have it horizontal. So we'll be able to check, see where our superheat is. Looks like we're running, uh, what is our saturation? I don't have these. To run about 26.9 degree. Because then this side tells you your saturation for your liquid side. Correct. Vapor side and then yep. well, if you have your high side and your... Now when your you have there. a receiver you can't really go off of that for subcooling. Um, the receiver is just kind of a brain dead way of charging a system that works. I mean you got a sight glass there and as long as it's full you're feeding a solid column of liquid to the TXV, which you gotta remember is the distance between this thing and the TXV inside, so you might have liquid here, but it could be flashing off on the way in. What you can do to try to figure out if your receiver is at maximum capacity or not is you can pump it down, and then you can heat up the side of the metal from top to bottom, and then kind of run your hand down it. Or I would start low, because it's gonna be the coolest low, because you have liquid there absorbing the heat, and as you come up, boom, you'll be able to tell where that's at in that receiver. So if you have one and you're just not sure is it low or not or whatever, that's kind of a little cheater method that you can use to kind of see how much refrigerant in, is in there. So what are we coming in super heat wise? Looks like 26, 26 degrees. So for cooler, I usually like to run somewhere between eight and 10. Um, you know, you can get away with a little higher, but that's quite a bit higher, but the cooler is not very cold. And you don't want to change the super heat until you get your box to temperature. You can get Maybe within five degrees of set point, that's about where I would do it at. Oh, 42. They got it it's hidden underneath here. Wow. Oh, okay. So we'll get that off there. There we go. So hook on to there and your gauge is zeroed out. 
we're close enough to it to where we could check it out there because it's only like 15 feet away. But if you're running through an attic and you've got all that heat possibly absorbing into the suction line, that's when you wouldn't want to do that. I've had times where you'll gain five, 10 degrees between uh, the inside unit and the outside unit. So we still have about 28. Oh, I guess I'll Yeah, it helps put that on there. No pressure, dude, no pressure. Yeah, it'd probably help if I had it, huh? No pressure. No, At least I ain't calling you names, man, and treating you bad. Not yet. You probably could do it from inside there. Not enough to grab all this. Isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, a little too. Probably just have to give him some more flex tape. Oh, my. Is it in the way? Let's see where we're at here. Well, look at that. Super is dropping. Yeah. Man, it was 25 out there. there we actually no. gained more heat. So our super heat's down to 12. Kind of hunt a little bit. We may need to open up just a little bit. We're out. Well, just opening the door that short duration of time, it's already added up to 44. So we'll wait just a little bit. It may drop down to 10 area when it gets the box temperature. So just going to make a slight adjustment. be in the fan path while it's running so yeah just the very back nut i can't get it with this big wrench well don't go any more than that though because if you go too much it'll sit there and go up and down it may flood i mean if you went three uh, three quarters area so it's already dropping some but yeah otherwise just start hunting going up and down up and down and take a while for it to settle down See, we got about a 10 degree TD. So when you have delta T and then you have TD, this is something I just learned not too long ago, which is pretty sad. So say you want a 38 degree box, you're running about a 27 degree saturation, that's about 11 TD. Temperature difference. Difference between your suction saturation and the box design temperature that you're shooting for. That's the difference between delta T, which is input versus input versus output which isn't very high usually on a cooler, which is pretty surprising. It's not, not very high at all. Not what you're used to like with an air conditioner. Shoot, like 15 to 18. You're, you're lucky if it's maybe eight, sometimes even less. Well, I'm saying like a home air conditioner or whatever. Yeah, home like air 15. conditioner technically somewhere between 13 and maybe 25, 28, depending on the type of system they got and ductwork and all that. So we're going to do a pump down here, make sure the pressure switch is set correctly, and then uh, got to crank it in so go to the right. It's upside down. Everything's backwards. Just crank her all the way in. Shut off about five, and then the pressure or the thing on the compressor released. So we're at 20. And what do they have it set for here? We're at about 20, maybe. We might want to raise that a little bit because that's going to short cycle right now. The reason why it's not cycling back on and off again is because we put that delay up a little higher. Okay, well, go ahead and let it out slowly and let's see where it comes on at. All in. It's all the way out. You broke it. What's wrong with it? What would be the first thing you'd check? pressure switch did. So let's see if it closed. Whoop, there it went. Huh. Something released. I wonder if they've got communicating crap going back and forth to the inside unit. It may have told that controller inside. It may be controlling it more than what we know. It very well could be. Because we've got... So now, what, what was our suction pressure again? No, it's not communi- yeah, we're- no, there ain't no communication type thing out there, just two power wires here going into the top of the contactor, so there's nothing going out. You got two fuses there that uh, are feeding controls that are going to here, which go over to there. 
which mainly is just your low pressure and high pressure cutouts. That's all you've got. Kind of scary the way they got that all wound in between those live wires, but. Well. Should have, if we would check the thermostat, we would have known. Um, we could raise our on a little bit, um, just in case. But the cutout's perfect. I mean, five, 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 ten pounds. You don't, want it to go you, you don't want to go into a negative, and, and, and some of these scrolls do not like to get down too low. They'll, they'll act up. So all we did is we made the differential larger to counter the raise in it. So we only took it up maybe five extra pounds just to kind of make sure we don't go up. Go ahead and pump her back down again and see what we get. See if it cuts out. So you can always watch your sight glass to see if it goes into... It'll start flashing off. It's starting to flash off. Yep. So, so you know that it's stopping the flow by seeing that. If you ever got one, you're questioning whether or not that sight glass is full or empty. You could always crank it down and see if it goes. You can watch it change. I raised differential too high. We'll go ahead and adjust that just a touch, and then go from there. All right, just came back on at 30, so. Good to go there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap that one up. We basically checked everything out. Everything was fine. The biggest problem here was the defrost was only set for 20 minutes and four times per 24-hour period. The uh, system was running good. We just double-checked everything, made sure it was started up correctly. And our apprentice there did a great job going through everything. So if you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.